but are misusing the access, the information, and their position to make money in disasters. As far as what they're doing right now, you, you don't know, you know, because it's like, why is the stock market going up in the face of the uh, disasters, you know, and the un- unemployment? Maybe it's not an organic organism anymore. Maybe it was never organic. Maybe the whole stock market is a synthetic organism, and therefore there are all kinds of synthetic efforts that can be made and causal agents that can come in to make things different than the way, let's say, companies are organically. It's not a true representation of what's going on, is my point. Oh, oh yeah, I agree. I think it's artificially propped up. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's, uh, I think the Federal Reserve bank or the treasury it probably owns more stock than anybody you, you see and uh i think that they are artificially uh, buying stock to try to uh, uh save the game you know and keep the game going and keep the people uh Hooked. yeah they because to me you know uh i wouldn't own any stock I don't own any stocks. I mean, I'm trying to tell people uh, how to reduce risk in, in, in a very fish, efficient way. I don't tell them to sell their stocks. Or I'm just saying, hey, you know, if you have a bunch of stocks here, this is the risk you have. Be conscious of it. Be, consider reducing it. And you can do it efficiently this way. And so uh, I think what the, the, the bigger the guys who control everything, if you will, they want people in there flat out gambling uh, with, uh, with the long stock. For example, and I'll tell you why I have a view, and this might sound crazy, but if you owned, let's suppose you personally owned a good bit of shares, either in your personal account or in your IRA or something like that, of BP, Okay. okay. Wouldn't you be a la- little less critical of BP because you own a bunch of this stock? Most likely. Yeah, and, and you know, yeah, we're sorry, but don't destroy the company because I own a bunch of it, right? And right. I think that that's the case with all of these companies. You know, Walmart puts, how many uh, small retailers that Walmart put out of business? But if you, uh, yeah, and, I, and if you're a fan of small businesses, you've got to be critical of Walmart. But if you own Walmart, well, then you can't be too critical because you're making some money off of it. You see, in uh, the same way with uh, the the, uh, the drug companies, you know, Merck, Baxter Lab, you know, and nu- uh, companies that own nuclear power plants. Every, it's all uh, it's all owned by uh, mom, mom and pops and pension plans and. Now they got them all uh, owning uh, employee stock options. You see, it's like with this employee stock options, it's like the company has replaced the family. Pretty heavy. Yeah, Pretty and, heavy. And I think that's really what's going on. And uh, I, because I don't think that anything that's done of, of a major nature has not been tested out uh, uh, as far as the impact. In other words, if they decide to promote something like, you know, like this this phenomena of uh, equity compensation and employee stock options, it's not just in Silicon Valley. It's all over the world. Now, I don't think that that phenomena is so beneficial to the employees and the companies to make it uh, all over the world. I think it's being promoted for for a larger reason. <laughs> <laughs> and it's to make the, you know, if there's a movie out there called Brave New World, which is based on Huxley's book, which uh, I think that's what we're coming to. I have a question for you about an example of a stock dropping massively when the publicity came out that Steve Jobs was ill. Yeah. I think it was a year ago or a year and a half ago. I don't remember the exact time frame, but somewhere around there. The stock dropped 100 points. And it's a strange question, but who benefits from inducing a panic in what's going on with the company and the stock? Well, if you were short and the stock drops 100 points, then that's, you know, you're going to benefit. 
By the way, I love Apple, and I'm not accusing them of anything, but I just wanted to ask you, when I remember when that happened, and I said, wow, it was pretty profound, and yet great products, great leadership, incredible innovation, and people got scared so quickly. Well, I think the stock is one of the uh, the best performers uh, over the last few years. I, I think it's 3.30 now. I think it was 3.60 a few days ago. And uh, heck, uh, in March of 2009, I think it was uh, uh, less than 100. You know, so uh, it, I think the price of the stock reflects uh, the quality of the company and its success. And... Uh, uh, but I, uh, you know, in a, an event like that, I, I don't, I, I think that the information that's coming out is, is coming out, uh, and I don't think they're artificially releasing it. I don't think that either. I just wanted to ask you about an example of one, the release of that information a year to a year and a half ago, and it really woke me up about how much a stock price can change by perception that it's artificial. It's about perception. Still a great company, still a great leader, still a great entrepreneur. You know what I'm saying? But the perception is, oh my God. Oh yeah, that, that's right. And uh, I, I, don't, I haven't followed Apple that much. I, I, I actually wrote a couple of articles about it. For, people uh, had employee stock options for Apple and they, have, they were faced with either to exercise the employee stock options and sell the stock or hedge them. And I said they should hedge them. And uh, and compare that to the other strategies that people uh, say that they. I, 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 so I, that's why I'm at least familiar with the stock. But as far as I'm not out there trying to analyze the sure. fundamentals, or I, I don't even know what they're. I understand. Are. I understand. Uh, Do you think that in the years to come, from now into the future, that more CEOs and CFOs and principals in a company are going to want to try new models? of setting up employee stock options? Are you interested in setting up new models? Do you think there's new hybrids or better ways to create opportunity for employees? Actually, I'm, I'm working on an article, or, or it's, it's, a, it's a business method and, uh, where they modify the, uh, the traditional employee stock options a little bit, making it such that the uh, grantees, that is the employee or the uh, uh, sometimes consultants, uh, have a few extra choices as to how they settle their employee stock options rather than just the one way, because the, the way they set it up, and it's, I guess it's worked f uh, pretty good for them, but it, it makes it difficult for the uh, manager, you know, who might have a couple hundred thousand, or 300, 400,000, uh, of options, how to best manage that. They don't, his choices are limited right now. And I, I proposed just recently, and I, I haven't even finished writing it up. I'm working on it with this other fellow who's a, who's a professor at the University of Alabama, uh, uh, where uh, I call it uh, multiple choice employee stock options. And it gives the, uh, employee that has the options a choice of of receiving the full amount of stock or having upon exercise receiving less than the full amount and getting some extra options uh making it easier for him to uh manage the positions and without raising the cost to the company god that would be a great problem to solve well, I, I think I solved it. It's just a matter of whether uh, the, I can get companies to, to be interested in that. I think it's like anything, John. You get it started. You get a couple of great companies to cooperate and to utilize it, and it starts a new wave. Yeah, well, I hope so, because uh, it's been a drag trying to get people to hedge. Well, maybe they don't understand it, kind of like a lot of people barely understand buying metals to hedge against inflation, <laughs> against yeah, currencies, yeah, right. you know? I, I agree, you know, and especially when you get into options, uh, and then when you get into employee stock options where you have some res restrictions and and the companies don't want you to do this, and I'm telling them, hey, you ought to do it. You know, the company, they might not want you to do it, but they you have a contract with them, you see. And so so anyway, I, I've been working on this, and 
I'll send you that. I'll send you uh, 